we're with Professor Ma Hui Zhuan. Yeah. Is that pronounced correctly? Correct. Ma Hui Zhuan. Yeah. yeah. What do you do here in Beijing? Um, I'm Professor of Translation Studies. Okay, at, we're at Beijing Foreign Studies University, right? Yes. Called Beiwai. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, we use BFSU. Yes, okay. And what's your official, what do you teach here then? I'm teaching mainly two courses, academic writing in translation studies and culture and translation. Okay. Academic writing in translation studies uh, for um, research students mm -hmm. and uh, uh, translation and uh, culture for undergraduate um, students. Okay, great. So are you training translators? Yes. Professional translators? Um, I mean, for undergraduate students, uh, they are, you know, they are uh, practicing their translation. Mm. Um, but uh, I think most will not become translators after their graduation. Mm -hmm. Two thirds will go to other fields. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. But for ME students and PhD students, some will, it's very for PhD students, uh, right. they will work as teacher Good. or researcher. We should explain that here you've got a, a graduate school for translators and interpreters. And you have an English, a Department of English and International Studies. Yeah. And these are separate parts well, of the yeah. university. Yeah, we are, you know, um, Beijing Foreign Studies uh, University is famous for language training. Mm -hmm. So um, we have not only these two schools you mentioned, we also have, uh, you know, a school of, um, like uh, um, Asian and African mm -hmm. studies. And they also have translation programs. Okay, so translation is split up yeah, in the institution. Yeah, almost in yeah. all the institutions okay. of, uh, at our university. Uh, but for English training, you know, translator training in English, mainly in our school and in graduate school of translation and interpreting. Uh, traditionally, uh, graduate school translation and interpreting is um, Practice oriented, okay. and mainly yeah, training yeah. translators. Okay. Uh, but for the students in our school, in school of English and international studies, uh, we are you know academic um, oriented. Okay. You you edit uh, a translation studies journal. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, it's a new journal founded in two thousand fifteen, uh, because you know in China we have a large population. Of, um, teachers who mm -hmm. offer uh, translation, um, you know, cl classes, and we have lots of translation researchers. Unfortunately, we only have several journals, mm -hmm. so um, we so want to. The name of the journal is. Oh uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the name of the journal is Translation Horizons. Right. Okay. Yeah. And people can find it online as well as in print? Yeah, okay. it's free, uh, so okay. you can access the yeah. journal uh, okay. freely. All the papers are free. Okay, and you're carrying articles on what kinds of topics? Um, different topics. I mean, because it's a new journal, we want to attract more researchers. Mm -hmm. So um, every paper which is academic oriented, I mean, do research related to translation phenomena and interpreting phenomena, mm -hmm. uh, they are all welcome. Okay. And uh, the journal is peer reviewed, and until now, it's one of the very influential new journals <laughs> in China. And that's hard work. Any Editing any journal is really hard work. Yes. Okay. What about your own research? Do you have time to do research, and what topics interest you? Um, I. I think I agree with you. I enjoy uh, doing research, um, you know, from our interests. Uh, my now I'm current research is uh, current research in interest is uh, culture translation. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm focusing on trans transcultural writing okay. and translation. For example, what kinds of things? Um, for example, I do not think translation is uh, translation is happening in the, you know uh, in a vacuum. 
and uh, all the translations are kind of rewriting, mm -hmm. um, whether in literary translation or uh, non-literary translation. I often uh, said, you know, translation is an art of re-expression. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from the perspective of culture, trust culture, communication, you will find there are lots of rewritings. Mm -hmm. um, Can you give, give an example of what you mean by rewriting? Uh, writing, or should I say, I can use another term, um, mm. adaptation. Yes, yes. Uh, I publish a paper in Perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is Trust Culture Rewriting and uh, Traditional uh, and uh, uh, Trust Culture Rewriting and Translation of the Traditional uh, Chinese Play. Okay, all right. Yeah, so uh, when this play was translated or maybe to be specific it should be rewrite mm -hmm. or, uh, there are lots of adaptations you know from yes. the play um, you know uh, it changed into a drama okay. and there are lots of plots added and the plots deleted yes yes yeah excellent let's go back to when you're in your mid-20s so when you're 23 24 25 where were you what were you doing uh, and then I was an MA student, mm -hmm. majoring in translation in Nankai University. In? Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, in Tianjin. Right. Is, Where are you from then, originally? Uh, originally? Yes. You mean when I got my... No, uh, originally when you were growing up, when uh, you were a child. Where in Shandong you? province, you know, a coastal oh, okay. city. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. And you went to... To uh, Tianjin, Tianjin to, to pursue Nankai. my study there. Yes. Okay. Because Tians, uh, Nankai University is famous for training translators, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So you wanted to be a translator, or interpreter. Um, oh. No, I have no idea at that time. <laughs> okay. You know. okay. Uh, to be the truth, in the beginning, I'm interested in literature. Okay. But yeah. uh, my family suggests maybe you go to you know you study translation mm -hmm. because you can easily find a job. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, have you worked as a translator? I do or? some translations. I, yeah. I translate literary translations. Um, yeah. Academic works, yeah. literary okay. works. I publish uh, essays Good. and I uh, translate academic works okay. into Chinese. So, from your MA in Nankai, mm -hmm. where did you go then? What did you do? Um, I, you know, I stayed there for six years. Yes. And in the beginning, I do my um, MA study there, mm -hmm. and then I just uh, uh, follow my study, uh, doing my PhD. In Nankai? In Nankai, okay. so I spent six years there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was your PhD topic? Mm, it's interesting, you know, um, whether you believe or not, my topic is the a study on NEDA's translation theory. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. And what? I'm yeah I'm the first graduate, um, you know, major in translation studies. Okay, yeah, I'm laughing because I've just been criticizing people for, but well, NIDA was very popular in China. Uh, at uh, yeah, at that time, yeah. NIDA is very popular. Yes. Yeah, why? Well, in the nineteen nineties, if you do not mention NIDA theory in your paper, you cannot publish it mm. in Chinese translated journal. And then when I write my paper at the time, you know, everybody is uh, criticizing on NIDA theory. Mm -hmm. There I, you know, my professor suggests, you know, you know theory, NIDA theory is, was so popular, you know, at that time, and then it was criticized. You could explore the reason why mm -hmm. people change their attitudes. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, so um, he said, you know, whether you agree or disagree with NEDA, you know, you cannot ignore him. Mm -hmm. You cannot ignore his theory. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from now, when I think about why NEDA was popular in the 1990s, uh, his theory is very practice-oriented. And in China, you know, many researchers or in universities, uh, mm -hmm. we believe translation theory is to Know, provide guidance mm -hmm. for translation um, uh, 
for translators. Yes. So, um, you know, and also he the first theorists who were introduced into China after, you know, China's uh, opening mm -hmm. to the outside world mm -hmm. in 1980s. Mm -hmm. uh, but for other theories, until now, it's difficult to accept, for example, post-colonial theory, yes. Derrida's deconstruction theory. So, so what were the reasons for resistance to NIDA or criticisms of NIDA? Uh, I think, you know, uh, in the late 1990s, you know, people, um, you know, we also have a kind of cultural turn. We are much influenced by international translation mm -hmm. studies. People notice, you know, translation is not just a language transfer. Mm -hmm. We cannot always deal with the translation from the perspective of, you know, equivalence. Yes. Uh, then, you know, some scholars think, you know, we should get rid of linguistic approaches to translation, mm -hmm. get rid of okay. uh, equivalence, okay. we move on to, you know, cultural studies, okay. sociological okay. studies. So we lost your transfer, you, 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 you finished your PhD in that guy. Mm -hmm. What happened then? After the graduation, I came here as a teacher. Okay. Yeah. So you were... You were uh, lucky? I mean, this is a very prestigious institution. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. So I got oh, You are my... very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm lucky, I think. Because okay. in, in 2001, I work here mm -hmm. as a lecturer. Okay. I mainly I offer courses for, you know, for translator training. I offer mm -hmm. business um, translation practice and uh, Chinese-English translation practice and uh, gradually, you know, I got my own PhD students, we do research okay. together. Great, very good. I enjoy my working. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. What kind of topics do your students work on? Um, different topics. Uh, some are focusing on translation teaching, some are focusing on fan subbing translation, mm -hmm. and some are doing translation history. Okay, so um, it's a wide range of, it's a wide of, range. of research. Yeah. yeah. And uh, are you... Are you happy with, I mean, do you tell them what to do? Do you tell them what topics to study or how does that work? Yeah, usually the first uh, thing I ask uh, my students is that think about what you are interested in. Oh, yes. You know, if they couldn't, um, I offer a topic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether they choose it or not, it depends on them. Okay, okay. Yeah. good. So what kinds of areas do you think we need research on, particularly in China? What kinds of issues or problems should Chinese scholars be working on, do you think? Um, I think in China, um, scholars are very um, you know, concerned about creating theories, because mm -hmm. um, uh, some are you know, complaining about the non-presence of Chinese scholars' discourse mm -hmm. uh, in international uh, journals. Mm -hmm. So we are eager to create theories. Okay. And uh, do you think that's good? Um, difficult to say. Um, uh, for example, according to my own understanding, I think there are some uh, things in China we should learn from our Western um, colleagues, mm -hmm. um, because uh, Western scholars like you, you know, are very creative and try to be critical to the new developments in translation studies. But in China, m many scholars, you know, hold the linguistic approach to translation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they believe you know translation theory is to provide guidance okay. for translators. Uh, not so many you know, Chinese scholars are focusing on I mean, doing um, real academic research. Uh, or shall I say, you know, we have you know, two types of translation, one is applied translation studies and mm -hmm. pure translation studies. Yes. In China, uh, I can see more than 6% are focusing on applied translation studies mm -hmm. um, for the theory building is lacking. So that's what more should be done on yeah, the theory. Yeah, yeah, more should be done. Okay. Good. Thank you very, very much, Professor Ma. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.